I'm back. Happy 2020, happy new decade. Okay, I was away for quite some time. I took quite a bit of time off over Christmas. So I hope you all had a nice Christmas and a nice new year. Um, our Christmas was okay. I'm not like, as you get older, it just seems, it, it's just this, I don't know, it just feels a bit stale every year. And this year was a bit different, of course, because I'd lost my sister back in the April. So this was our first Christmas where she wasn't around. I mean, for all her fault, she wasn't around at Christmas a lot anyway because of her problems in life and all that kind of thing. So for a few Christmases, we didn't see her properly anyway. So, but even so, you know, the, the grieving process is still happening. It still hits me hard sometimes. Um, it's just always going to be there, I think. It's just something you don't get over. Like, it's just always going to be there. So we had a really rough year last year and then Matt breaking his hip back in October. Um, he's getting better. So, little update with Matt. He, we just had the hospital appointment yesterday, which was up in Birmingham. So we went to the second hospital appointment. So it's been 12 weeks. It feels like 12 years. <laughs> it's just felt like the longest time because it's taken him so long to um, recover really. He's, he's walking on one crutch now, um, he's gone back to work and he can drive his car but it's everything's really tiring for him and it's just a long road ahead. So the surgeon said yesterday that the psoas muscle which runs from the base of the spine down into the hip is the one that is it controls like the lift of the leg so that's the problem that he's got at the moment is that the psoas muscle has not come back to life properly yet it's like slowly happening but he said it will be a slow process so that's that's the update but Matt's getting there and this year I'm full of new plans in my head I've been learning more sort of um, about myself I've been reading books and learning about more of the inner self which is you know that's the sort of path I'm on so I'm doing pretty good and I've got lots of ideas for this year I'm going to try and do way more videos um, I've shut shop another day a week so that I can actually put the time into making the videos so I sort of was reassessing and thinking well where does the money that I need to live come from you know essentially and it's mail order and the shop, I mean, it, it sort of ticks along and some months are really, really good and some months aren't that great. But YouTube, I really enjoy doing a lot and I want to put a lot more of my efforts into that because it gives me back so much more than the shop does. You know, I, it's call me weird, I don't know. A lot of people, you know, they, a lot of soap makers all want a shop. It's like, like I said before, it's not all it's cracked up to be. A lot of your time is taken away and if you're like me and you really, really value your own time then a shop might not be the route for you that's all i'm saying i just sometimes i have regrets that i've ever opened a shop um but i'm just going to work the hour so that it suits me so now i'm only, only going to be open like tuesday wednesday thursday from 10 a.m till 2 p.m and that's it i'm not going to open anymore so i've got mondays and fridays free to film if i want to film and my weekends off as well so the rest of it's mail order which is where you know it's, that's my business essentially is a mail order soap business so anyway I hardly have any soap left on the shelves in here, it went crazy for, we have a Boxing Day annual sale, so I think went a bit mad. So this is going to be my first soap since I've been back. So I'm going to be soaping a new fragrance called Starry Night today, that's from Candle Shock and it's here in this little aluminium bottle. And this one, I did just bring it up on their website, let me have a quick reeler. Okay, so... The scent description says, it's just got the top notes, the middle notes and the base notes. So it says bergamot, lemon, mandarin, cinnamon, apple and grapefruit. Middle notes, cedar, amber, jasmine, patchouli, tobacco. And base notes are musk, sandalwood, amber, vanilla, myrrh and tonka. Now this is like, um, it's like when you walk into, say like a John Lewis the perfumery department there's just something really like rich and opulent and it's just like oh that's nice <laughs> it's one of those kind of scents so i thought starry night okay i don't i don't know if i call it starry night i might do quite nice for the new year and it's uh, well it's very dark still we're in january the depths of the winter although it's so warm at the moment i've actually turned the heating off in here because like, it just gets too hot so i thought for starry night i'd do 
a mix of a sort of cobalt blue mixed with black. So I'm going to use some tropical blue by the Sopery and black sparkle by the Sopery. So I'm just going to make my little notes on my soap cal print out here. So the date is the 9th of the 1st, 2020. And I'm just going to write down while I'm sort of getting ready, I'll, I'll do that in my own little time off camera. So today I'm going to be using the heat transfer method, which I've been using throughout sort of November, December. I haven't filmed this yet, but there's lots of videos on the heat transfer method. It's just where you use your hot lye water to melt your solid oils and butters. And then when they're melted, you add your liquid oil. So it's, it's kind of I would say it's quicker, it's less of a faff around, like, because you can just literally pour the water over the solid oils and butters and it just, you know, slowly stir it and it all sort of melts down and it's like, the mixture cools down, I find, a lot faster. So I'm going to use that method today because it's great. So I'll just get all my stuff ready, get my apron on and I'll show you the process of that. So there you go, there's a quick update and let's get going. Okay. God, I've missed this. Okay, so I have my hot lye water here in this jug here and I'm just going to pour this hot water into the, the hot lye water into my solid butters and oil. So in here I've got coconut oil, sustainable palm oil and cocoa butter. So you just literally pour it over your solid oils and butters and it will start to melt immediately. And with goggles on, do not forget to have your safety measures in place if you're making soap. Just gently stir it in and over the course of about the next 10 minutes, this will just melt down. So I just give it a stir, get on with some other things, come back, give it a stir and that's it. You'll be ready to add your liquid oil. So it's already going to start cooling. I mean, it's hot at the moment, but it will start cooling pretty much straight away once it starts to eat away at these solid oils, as you can see. So, the only thing I will say about this method is you can be fooled into thinking that you've reached it. So when you add your liquid oils, it's, it already looks pretty thick because, you know, this is just melted down these, these thick oils and butter, the solid oils and butter. So... The first time I did it, I thought, oh, I've reached trace, and then I kept stick blending. I thought, no, I haven't. It just looked like I had, but I actually hadn't. So just bear that in mind. Keep stick blending until you actually can see the trace of the soap on top of the batter mix, like usual, because it's deceiving. It just kind of, kind of looked like it's ready to go, and it's not. So there was one batch I made and it came out pretty soft like it's hard now like it was fine I, I always use a water discount as you know but um the next day i came to cut it and it was still really really soft and i thought what's that and i think it was that this method where i'd not reached full trace before i poured the soap so there you go just to bear that in mind just make sure you've reached full trace because it's deceiving okay so we're nearly there i'm just going to let those tiny little bits sort themselves out so I've just got my liquid oils here so I just start, got olive oil and sunflower oil and just pour that in give it a little stir with a spoon and then we'll get to stick blending in a second um, I've just decided as well so there you go it gets quite liquidy now I've just decided to um, use some more colours <laughs> and do a swirl like I would normally do a swirl because otherwise it's going to be a bit boring. Okay, so this is ready to stick blend. As you can see, it's very liquidy now and it's kind of like room temp, almost. A little bit warmer than room temp. So I'm just going to stick blend. That's another thing as well, is you won't see the change when I start stick blending because it's just it's already there you know okay so emulsified but it's not quite at a thick trace or anything like that it's uh, pretty much where I want it to be at the moment because I just want to mix up some colors so my base I'm still going to do that nice dark blue like I said 
I'm going to add three more colours, which I have here, and I'm going to use the Sopri's Pistachio Green. It isn't anything like pistachio, it's like a very bright... <laughs> that's not pistachio, I suppose. Maybe when you get little flashes in your pistachio nuts, but it's not really that colour. <laughs> but that's a really good green, it's almost like, a, like an emerald, but maybe brighter. Then I'm going to use Purple Heart, which is actually similar to that Plum Purple shade I use a lot. That's Purple Heart. And then I'm going to use Fiery Red, which is a beautiful pinky red. Yeah, so I'm going to use those colours. So first of all, I'm going to pour off each little bit that I need. I'm just doing a little swirl because it is going to be just one log of soap. Because it is. <laughs> I'm only making up a small batch just to see how this fragrance goes. I've got more of the fragrance, so if it turns out nice, then I might use it again. You never know. Okay, pop that to the side. I'm going to try and be really professional <laughs> and not be so messy like I normally am. See how that goes too. Okay, so I'm going to use sort of like a level. Well, not quite level, but yeah, just over level spoon of this. You don't need much, obviously, with a small batch and just doing an inner swirl. So I'll just mix these in. I'm just going to get my mould ready here. I'm still using my nurture inner bits, like the, um, let me just show you, just the cardboardy bit. Okay, so I've been watching lots of Dolores and I've been reading her books. I've been learning lots and lots of things. And she's answered lots of questions that I've had throughout my life, in a weird way. I'll get more into that as we go along. But one in particular, there's like, sort of things I've had in my head about people out there, you know, in the world, who don't really do a lot with their life. And I mean, sort of, you know, they might go up the corner shop and get the paper, and they might go and, um do the lottery <laughs> and not a lot else in their life and I've always been baffled by those types of people it's like don't you want to explore you know don't you want to go and see the world and Dolores mentions in her book like she's it's not her saying it it's somebody who's being regressed and she's asking them questions and they're meeting people on through the veil or whatever you know and they mentioned that people who live a very quiet life may well have lived a very traumatic life in a previous life. So this life that they're living where everything is kind of boring and you know just fixed and not a lot happening means that they're having a rested life this time around. So I thought that was quite interesting. <laughs> Whether it's true or not we don't know. We won't know until we die and we find out all these things that we have questions about. <laughs> but I just really love listening to things like that and reading about things like that because it gives me an inner peace in some kind of way you know. And I am one of those people that asks questions all the time. It's like I'm born into my mother. So if you, well, you don't know my mom, but if you did, you'd get where I'm coming from and why I question things. You know, she said to me the other day, you're obviously born into me for a reason. I was like, yeah, because, you know, we're on the same sort of uh, wavelength when it comes to life and what it's all about. And we have long conversations about this kind of thing. I mean, some people never delve into this. They never want to. And that's fair enough. But I'm one of those people that does. And I, you know, we exist. <laughs> So there's lots of channels like that that I watch and lots of books like that I watch. I'm learning more of my tarot and I've just had a new book from Matt. It was just the ultimate guide to the Rider Way Tarot. So I'm really enjoying learning more when I do my, I don't do tarot for anybody else. I only ever do it for myself, but um, yeah, that's been really good as well. So, right, I'm just going to put the fragrance in. <laughs> I hope you don't mind me rambling like this. It's like each their own. I have, I'm never judgmental of others and what their beliefs are. And, you know, the thing is, we're all heading to the pretty much the same place, I guess. <laughs> Whatever you believe. But I'm not religious. But I don't disbelieve, you know, certain aspects of religion. It just, I think we're all heading towards the same place, you know. And I think there's lots more to life than meets the eye and I just like to dive in and have a have a sort of think about it all and I enjoy doing that so you know there's no we've all got things in common regardless of what your religious path is we're all human beings 
and we should all be loving each other and looking after each other and looking out for each other, you know, apart from serial killers, of course. <laughs> but um, you know what I mean. We should just be there for one another and listen and without prejudice and without judgment, just let everybody live how they want to live, you know, make their own way to where they need to get to. It's it's not your job to do that for anyone else. It's just, I like to share what I think about and, you know, it's that's as far as it goes. <laughs> it's just nice to have a place, an outlet where I can share my thoughts and most of you kind of um, like to listen and lots of you agree with me about certain things. So that's nice. Okay, so you just must say this, like the, the reason that I, well it's not the main reason, but the reason I'm more so on this path in my life is because I have lost somebody that was very, very close to me and I had a lot of questions after she was gone, you know, um, like where did she go <laughs> and things like that. So it's, it's a very personal journey that I'm just sharing. So that's it. It's just, it's made me think about so much. And I know a lot of other people have had that terrible loss in their lives as well and sharing these things where I found a piece, it's like then I should share it with other people, you know, that are struggling too. So I'm trying to do that as well. So it's to help others as well as myself. Okay, let's get to pouring this. I'm just going to pour this in, this base. So, yeah, anything I find out that has given me some kind of sen a sense of peace, I think I want to share I want to share that because I know that there's people out there that have lost their children, there's people out there that have lost brothers and sisters like me, um, and we need to help each other out, you know? Okay, I'm going to do the purple. So in any, if you can help anybody in any way with your experiences and your things that you read or you watch, then it should be shared because you shouldn't keep it into, like you shouldn't keep it to yourself, I don't think. I think you should share it if it's if you found something that has helped you then help others because that's what we're here for help each other out you know another thing in the news at the moment of course is the australian bushfires well you, can you even call them bushfires now i mean it's gotten absolutely ridiculous so any australians watching let us know in the comments like what is actually going on because there's so much information out there that it's hard to know what we should actually believe and how bad well I mean it, obviously it's really bad it's really bad but um there's people in certain areas that I don't know if, if it's hit certain areas if it's hit all areas you know there is that picture that went out I think it's on Instagram and there's a, a thing that I follow called earth focus and he posted this picture and in the caption had set sorry about the sound out there somebody wheeling a wheelie bin had said about the picture going out that this was a satellite image and it was a series of images that were overlaid so you could see where the bushfires had hit but when this picture went out it's kind of gone viral and now everybody thinks that the whole country is on fire all at the same time and that's not the case that's not the case i mean over the last few months they've had fires in all these different areas but not all at the same time so this picture just looks like the whole of the australia is on fire and it's very misleading because now I've got friends on Facebook that are posting like, oh my God, look how bad this is. And you're just like, come on, read between the lines because that's not actually, it's really bad. Like it's really bad, obviously, but it's not, the whole country isn't on fire like that picture is sort of depicted then. So any Australians out there that are watching, fill us in, would you? So we know. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Okay. It's very thick. But it's just like perfect topping consistency. Mmm. There we go. Okay. That be that. Just give this another little wipe off. So it's time for me to go home and go and see my little doggy. So there is starry night i'm not going to put any glitter on i'm going to leave it as it is because i don't want to use glitter hang on let me just take these off so i'll be back in the morning to finish this video and get it uploaded ready so that at least for my first week back 
in the workshop we've got a video so i will see you tomorrow and i hope you're well and have a lovely evening i'll see you later. on to cutting now anyway let me just quickly let you know that i did do some research on the australian bushfires a little bit this morning just so i could find out some more information and um it looks like it is on the eastern and southern part of the country not like over in the west so i don't think it's hit it's hit perth or anything like that so it's really 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 awful but it isn't all over the country all at the same time so i did have a little look anyway this is what this soap came out like it's quite nice We'll need to be tidied up a little bit yeah. so it's friday friday and today i have orders to finish packing and i've just downloaded a program to watch while i pack my orders what am i what am i doing it's not like me to be that stupid <laughs> i'm going to be watching the trial of Mar the murder of Margaret Fleming which is on BBC iPlayer at the moment so I've just downloaded the two episodes to watch while I pack orders so that'll keep me going and it's a British um, documentary series on the murder of this lady so I'm gonna watch that um, and I think that's about it I've been listening to my podcast still I'm still listening to uh, Real Crime Profile, that's one of my favourites. That's with Jim Clementi and Laura Richards. And they have done a massive, extensive podcast on the Jeffrey Epstein scandal. So I've been listening to that and their views. And that's uh, kept me going, actually, while I've been at work. It's been just so, so, so horrible. But I've really enjoyed listening to their opinions because they're opinions of two people that I really, really respect and love listening to. Top of that looks really nice there. So yeah, those I love Jim Clementi. He's amazing. He's uh, compassionate. He's clever. And uh, yeah, you just know his heart's in the right place. And yeah, he's a great person to listen to. That's a nice one as well. So yeah, and that's what I'm going to do today. Finish orders and then I'm going to go home and get this video edited and finished and uploaded so that we've got one for this week, for my first week back at work. And I shall maybe, actually I think I'll probably have to wait to make more soap until next week because I've got to make some hair conditioner and some shampoo bars because I've just sold out of all of those. So. I need to get those sorted. But this soap, I'm really quite happy with the swirl. It's nice, it looks pretty. Bit of a strange one for the first soap to come back and make for New Year, but <coughs> you know, where do you start really, other than where you start? So that's that. So I will get that trimmed up, get it on the shelf. In the window at the shop at the moment, there is absolutely no soap. Like I normally have like my two old moulds that I use which I've lined and I keep them in the window on an angle so that they look pretty in the window. All my soaps lined up, the ones that are curing, I always keep them in the window so people can see. But um, I haven't got anything in there at the moment so I'm closed. The shop's actually closed until the end of January while I get some products on the shelves and then I'll reopen. So I'm actually in a really nice headspace right now because I don't have to do anything other than make stuff so i'm going to deal with the shop okay i will see you for the next video take care bye